So um, a little background into me quickly, and then we can go to what we're talking about. First and foremost, I have never been in an animation festival. However, that doesn't say we cannot state the practical purposes of why it's good and why we need to be there. Now, when we think about what we do, the craft that we do, overall in terms of people in the world, we're a very small group. The way we keep connected to that group is through festival. It's a very tight-knit community. And I have been in Zoom meetings with the guy who directed up, all because I joined a group that, because it's such a small, as I said, group of people. So as we talk today, we want to establish two or three main things. One, why we want to join festivals, what festivals you should join, how do you go about doing that? So I am going to talk about the why, Kevin is going to talk about the how and the which, and then from there we can have some general discussions about it. So in terms of the why, we want to um, actually go into the festival. Because a lot of people here don't know me, I just want to ask this question first. Who here has that completed animation? I know Dominic, I know you have Reach, and I know Miko also has videos, but who here else has animation and you're struggling to get it out there? So let's set up that first so we know who we're having this conversation with. Patrick, do you want to tell me about your project and some of the struggles that you have had with getting that? information out there about it um okay well uh for truly valiant um i think it was a completely i think it was a different approach to what um some of us may have done but a quick rundown it was a short film specifically done for a Christian Art Film Festival um, called Engage Art. And it was with me and my fiance. Um, what we really, we, we weren't really focused on marketing or pushing the IP, really. It was more about just completing something um, literally for just. Um, religious reasons as well as just being able to have something fully complete um and we were just blessed with the opportunity to come third in that competition which brought about a bit more notoriety um and then also with encouragement from like kevin um and other persons we decided to enter it into other competitions um and so we, we also got another award at Ligno Vice Film Festival with it. Um, I would say, though, I haven't been... Three awards, three. Three, yes, three awards. <laughs> from from, from Ligno Vice as well. So in terms of the, the reason why I wouldn't necessarily say struggle is because the intention wasn't ne wasn't necessarily to push hard to get it out there. However, we see the value in getting it seen more and more and more, um, especially in a shorter window. Because um, as the saying go, you're only as good as your last work. So, um, so yeah, yeah. If that answers. Anything. Right, sorry, my mic was unmuted. So you That's mentioned okay. that the goal wasn't really to push the IP. So I want to ask this because depending on the, and we don't want to go too far before mm -hmm. we digress, but this is very important, especially because time is so important that if you cannot articulate within the first 10 to 15 seconds why you are in front of me and what is the purpose of this, most persons won't give you the time of day. So we're talking about something that you spent years or day, months of your life creating. You should be able to articulate why you did it. So what was the purpose behind it, if not to push the IP? 
Well, I did articulate it a while ago. Um, we saw it as an opportunity to collaborate together and okay. deliver a completed piece that would honestly glorify the Lord that we serve. That was ultimately okay. we saw the deadline of the competition engage art um, as more of a context for us to work towards that goal because it gave a year deadline which we thought was achievable, um, which it was. Um, for me, in terms of my own work, what I have found personally is when trying to develop an IP, when trying to create something to then put before someone else, if there is not a deadline and usually an external one, um, I find it much more challenging to complete. Uh, so recently, um, if we want to talk about things that to struggle with, it's not an animated short, don't want to get too far off, but like with Princess Paddycake for Kingstone, Recently, um, had that deadline not been there, it may have taken me much longer to generate something that I think is a viable product, which I am aggressively trying to convert into something, um, a valuable IP, so. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we think about the reason or one of the reasons why we struggle here in Jamaica as a third world country is because we're very focused on the immediate what is in front of us, which there's nothing wrong with that. It is what is there. Now, when, as you mentioned, you go out and you apply and you get into the different festivals across the world, you start to no longer look at just the level of what is being created in Jamaica, but you're also working and computed, competing on an international stage and you're getting the review and you're getting the recognition of international bodies, which will greatly increase the value of the work that you do. So depending on the root cause of why you do the work, then that is good. And then the experience that comes from a competing at an international level, because with the globalized world that we're in, it's no longer important your geolocation. It's the quality of work that you can do. So if you're not doing the quality of work or of an emerging nation, but of the best in the world, it works out better in your favor. So I think before we have this part of the discussion, I want Kevin to talk about the experience of being in festivals, because I don't think it's that point in the conversation where people are going to be receptive of that as yet. I don't know if that makes sense to us. So Kevin, if you don't mind, you have won awards. You have been in a number of festivals. If you don't mind sharing about that, could you go ahead, please? Sure, sure, no problem. Um, before I jump into that, I just wanted to see, um, since people are shy, if you can probably, you know, raise a hand or just say in the chat whether you have a completed animation or not, or what you consider completed. All right. So you can do that now. Jump in the chat. Just say yes. I have a completed um animation piece um while you do that i will tell you all right so my history where film festival this film festivals are concerned started back in i believe it's 2011 or 12 maybe i started learning animation around then self-taught and there was a festival that i had my eye on it was anime caribe which is the biggest animation festival and the longest running animation festival in the, the Caribbean. I know most of you know Kingston and what I would con consider Kingston is the biggest animation market. There are differences between a market and a festival. They get confusing because sometimes they happen side by side, but a festival is where you showcase films and people appreciate the films while a market is a place where um, the business people get together. Well, not necessarily the business people. If you're creative, but you're the owner of your IP, you get together for buying and selling purposes. Anyway, I did an animation and I was aiming for Anime Caribe. And like Patrick, I set a deadline. I had this idea in my head for a while, but every time I start, I would stop. And it was setting that deadline that got me to actually finish it. And I submitted to that festival and I, I don't remember if I got into the festival. I'm trying to remember if I got in and didn't win anything or got rejected. Maybe it was rejected, I don't remember, but that was my first encounter. And I thought, boy, I didn't get into that festival and really, really wanted to. 
but it was a lesson to me that, okay, there were areas of my animation I needed to brush up on. And I went back to the animation to refine it. And then I entered the Lignum Vitae Film Festival, I believe it was 2013. And I won Best Animation at that festival. And there began um, my career in animation because after we getting that win and posting it on social media, somebody came to me and said, hey, there is this company that's looking for an animator. And it happened to me, the Jamaica Environment Trust, who they've been my first and longest, you know, running clients. Um, I did all the non of Jamaica animations with them. And uh, after that, now, I started working on another animated piece, A Vehicle in the Maroons. And otherwise, I do film as well. And I see LRS's second chance is complete. Good, good. Right, so I would with a beacon on the maroons now, of course, having learned what I learned from the previous animation and of course animating commercially, I put all of that into a beacon on the maroons and uh, I entered several festivals, won five awards so far, far with a beacon on the maroons. It was, I think, three awards at Lignum Vitae Film Festival, um, which was best actor, best script, and best animation. I won an award at the the, at GATFest, Best Animation, and I won an award at a, a film festival in Ohio called the Columbus Black International Film Festival. And of course, winning those three, again, you know, propelled um, my status. It allowed me to not only get into, you know, pitching competitions that kind of raised attention on a beacon of maroons, but, you know, it led to opportunities that, you know, would help to expand my knowledge on animation and um, you know other opportunities for more jobs etc and of course I, on the film side i've won a couple of awards as well and one of the beauty one of the beautiful things that happened along the way is a website called film freeway before when i had earth just started you had to be emailing and hoping that they get it and you know sometimes you sometimes you might even win an award and don't even realize you win an award because with the columbus one I think I emailed them to ask them, hey, how did the festival go? And they go, oh, you know, you won Best Animation. And I was like, what, really? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to send the award down for you. And I thought to myself, well, if I never emailed them, I wouldn't even know. But through Film Free, you know, when you apply for a festival, um, the great thing is that they tell you when you win, they tell you when you're selected, and that dashboard is there so you can keep track of all of your submissions and so on. But the important thing about um, submitting to festivals is that it's a marketing tool for you. So if you're somebody who is, you're trying to find work, whether it be with a studio or, you know, you're just trying to find gigs as a freelancer, these awards help to bring attention to you, right? Because all people care about is that, oh, you've won an award. Let me see what your work is like. And, you know, for them, sometimes it's bragging rights that they can say, oh, this award-winning animator worked on, on my commercial uh, but other than that, it also helps you if, for example, you are, if, for example, you have an IP that you want to push, like John said, it helps a lot to have that accolade behind your name to say, oh, this is an award-winning piece. So it tells the producer that you are talking to that this show has potential. Networking is another thing that I forgot to mention. It's a huge deal with festivals. I mean, when... When I got into the film industry and the animation industry, I, di I literally didn't know anyone. And just by entering film festivals, I got to know so many people and got to work with so many people that I'm, you know, I practically know like maybe 80 to 90 percent of, of the industry just from from attending festivals. So festivals are very important, you know, for your career. It's very it's very important for just your, you know, improving your workmanship. It also indicates to um, potential um, employers that you understand story and you understand how to tell a story from beginning to end, right? Not just animating some short clips. And one thing that Sherry had pointed out to me, she reminded me yesterday is that Pixar, Pixar still enters um, festivals and award competitions, even though Pixar is a big established Company. Actually, Go ahead, Sherry. I would like to expand on that point because I feel like this is the industry's best best kept secret when it comes to new animators. So 
the dream of most animators in the Western Hemisphere is to win an Oscar for your animation. Everybody wants like a, a pretty gold statue. And even at one of our meetings, someone said that they want to be the first Jamaican to win an Oscar for animation specifically. The reason Pixar and DreamWorks and all these other large international studios still enter animation festivals is because you have what are Academy Award qualifying film festivals. And what that is, is the Academy's judging team doesn't go around the world watching every single movie there is to watch and then deciding what is going to be the nominated films for the Academy Awards. What happens is similar to the Olympics, is that you enter into several Academy Award qualifying festivals and the winners of those festivals are put into a pool to be reviewed by the Academy. And that is how you get the nominees for the Academy Awards. So if at any point in time you do or you aspire to enter or to win an Academy Award or a BAFTA or a Canadian um, Screen Award, or even to be in the top best, the top 100 best animations for the year. And that's not decided by the United States. I believe that's decided by Coalition. I think it's a CIFO. I think it's a CIFO. Yeah, a CIFO, the International Animation Association. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that is decided by a CIFO. If you ever want to be on that level, if that is an aspiration of yours, you cannot do that without film festivals because film festivals are how they essentially sort through the sheer amount of animations that are being produced each year. So that is why we are encouraging you to don't sit on your films. Don't just make them and sit down on them and have them there put them out into the world, see where you can improve. I'm going to read the responses that we've gotten. Elio Rose says that second chance is complete. However, we want to make changes to the story based on feedback we received from a panel of judges. And they might also have copyright issues with the actual beats of the songs used. I believe you can solve that if you get a festival license for the music or, or the audio that you have used inside your animation instead of having That's, to change. Yeah, that is correct. You can reach out to the producer of that music or you can, if you can find a website that manages that music, you can apply for a festival license. In some cases, it's free because it's a festival license. In other cases, a very, very minimal cost. Um, you know, just for you to check it out and see, or you can create something original or find music that already has an open festival license. Okay. And then uh, I believe it's Dominic says that they have reach. So that is Patrick, Dominic and Eliora who have reach and second chance. Okay, cool. And the, yeah. So that information like festival licenses and how you can enter into festivals are why we're having this workshop today so that we can spread that information that it's sort of expected that you know, but nobody ever actually says it to you. So we right. want to be very specific about saying it out loud so everybody knows that these things exist and it's not a maze of copyright right. that you have to go through there's a very specific application you have to make yeah and in to, some to cases if you don't find if you don't find a term festival license you can look for exhibition license mm -hmm. okay exhibition right. license. So, license so that is me running remote back to you john all right so and guys i want you all to forgive me for any of the stumbling box i am new so i am getting acclimated as we go along here but i have a very curious like i just want an opinion so if you want to answer in the chat that's fine or yes or no who here wants 
to enter a festival. As in, this is something that you want to do, you just don't know how to. Okay. Um, Come on, me. I do want to. Is that a valid question? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't yes. hear what Dominic said. Yeah, I didn't hear it either. Um, it's always been a kind of because I've been interested in, but not a hundred percent willing to commit just yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Why, why do you not want to commit? The ones that I've heard about so far, well, it was more just time. The ones that I've heard about, for example, I wanted to try, there's one in L LA that have a four to eight hour film festival. Granted, that's not animation, but just trying stuff in general. I like to fling myself into generally anything to just learn about them. And mm. I just wasn't ready for that one. Okay. Right. Um, but you are aware that there, there are like thousands of festivals going on all year long. I am aware of that, yes. Okay, so why just that one in LA, in LA, why not others? I mean, it wasn't necessarily just that one, per se, but I, I did want to try that one eventually. But um, okay. I, just not yet. At the time, I wasn't ready, I suppose, because school mm -hmm. was the bigger priority. Right. Um, well, you, you have, yours is, your animation is Reach, right? If I'm not yes, mistaken. Sir. Okay, cool. And do you want to enter that into festivals? I'd rather fix it up first. Than okay, I, that was going to be my next question because I do remember that piece and I remember the last part of it is a bit rough and I wanted yeah. to know if you had plans to fix it up. Yes, it is I, a very good concept. I was, I was yeah. actually wondering how we got so far um, to begin what with. What do you mean? What do you I, mean? I'm, I'm assuming I can assume here, Mr. Jackson was the one that brought it to Jen, or maybe with Jonathan, that showed, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I didn't. Well, I mean, as you know, I was one of the judges when it was being presented. Um, yes, sir. I did introduce it to Jonathan and Sherry. So, yes, that's how it got. But Roshane has also mentioned it, and the community is microscopic, guys. Yeah, <laughs> really, really. The community well, is microscopic. If one person in the community has seen your film, just assume that the rest has had or heard of it or seen it. I, I guess that's true. But when when um, you were mentioning how we're talking about marketing the product uh, for bigger stuff, in my in my head, I'm like, wow, I I reached Jen. I'm like, well, that's a big step already. I'm, I'm not sure how much further it can go from here. But much further. It can go much further. <laughs> much further. <laughs> the week when the Maroons is in Africa, Kevin. Yeah, it's it's Maybe. currently competing in in it's currently competing in a festival in Greece and a festival in 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 Nigeria. Interestingly enough. You know. And, and funnily enough, they reached out to me. They found it on the festival circuit and reached out to me. Okay. I actually okay. have another question, if I might. How many people yeah. here, sorry, I just want to ask it because I think it's very important. And right. what Dominique said kind of made me think a lot of people might be thinking of this. How many people here think that because you are students, you are not ready for film festivals. And you That's can just a good type one as well. yes in the chat or... I, I just want yeah. to know because it's, it's, yeah. it's a belief I had until I went to the United States and realized that all the animation schools over there have their students entered into film festivals. Okay. And it's Why actually a requirement to graduate. And while we wait on people to, to, to mention their thoughts in the chat, I just wanted people to know that um, be, because there are so many festivals, there is a festival for every category or genre of animation. Please, please right. bear in mind that genre, animation is not a genre. The Academy Awards will have you believe animation is a genre. It's not a genre. It's an art form like film, and it has different genres, you know, horror, comedy, etc. And with that being said, there are festivals that cater strictly to students. There are festivals that have student categories. 
And there are festivals that don't care if you're a student or not. You can enter all of these festivals. The other thing is that if you're a film and I want to sing out Dominic here because he was the last person to speak, there are festivals that cater to persons with disabilities or minorities um, because there are festivals who their thing is that they don't really care about action adventure, they don't really care about um, anime, they don't really care about, you know, something sad and gloomy. They want to see films or animations that represent people in society that are hardly represented. So that guy with the one arm, the girl with the, the, um, the autism, they want to see animations like that. And they want to see, you know, one of the things that I loved about yours was how able that one arm guy was. And that's the type of films that they want to see. And you, know, one of the things that we're going to be talking about very soon is how you go about selecting the right festival for you, because it's not, film festivals are not something that you just jump and go, oh, BAFTA is a big festival, I want to enter BAFTA. Oh, Sundance is a big festival, I want to enter Sundance. You have to be very, very honest and objective about your animation. You have to, you have to be able to look at your animation and discern whether or not this animation meets that standard. A lot of times you'll animate something and because we spend so much time with it, we're like, oh, this is the most awesome thing ever. I'm going to enter Sundance and I'm going to win. And that's not the case, you know. So it might be the quality of the animation or it might just be the storyline. Sundance just doesn't want that type of storyline. But then you might see that there's a festival that specifically is looking for things about people with disability, maybe even specifically about, you know, able-bodied people with disabilities. And you might go, hey, that's a good fit for me. Um, you might find festivals that are for students and you go, hey, that's a good fit for me. And it's just a matter of being honest. You know, if you know that, hey, all right, my animation is complete, but I need some refinement, then, you know, you're going to have to think about how that works. And I know Jonathan is going to ask this question, which is how much would it take for you to finish your project to satisfaction? <laughs> and whatever, so I know he's going to get to that question. But for now, well, let me look on the responses now to see. Well, go, you we can go ahead and take ten minutes. All right. To so you, and I know let me. Patrick has to leave, so let's go all right. On. So let me say this, and I want you to hear this, Patrick. So before you go, um, <laughs> when we when we are going about and we're doing our works on a day to day basis, it is very important that the task that we complete today is beneficial to the task that we have to complete tomorrow. The work that we do, it follows a very strict and steady guideline where if you try to do a production and you try to do the animating before you did the storyboard or you try to do something before something that precedes it is done, it throws off the entire production line. What we are creating and what we are building, our careers and our reputation and so forth, it is the same thing. It follows a very strict and a very set pattern now, there are things that will vary depending on what you're doing. And the reason I ask who wants to join festivals is because I want those who, those, the persons who want to get the Oscar and persons who want the recognition, I wanted to enforce the point that this is a necessary milestone. Now, if in the long run, you don't want that for yourself, then this advice wouldn't be good for you. And we have to acknowledge when advice is good, but it's not applicable to me. So with what we mentioned earlier, with what we're doing in Jan, it is our hope for those who want to be a part of festivals to spearhead the movement of Jamaicans entering more festivals to get more wins going as we're at one of those early points in our industries. So a goal that we had is of the persons who are here, we want to have everybody set up their film freeway. And we want persons to start that research process of what festivals are applicable to them. But what I'm thinking about it is this. If what you want to do is not the networking and not that social interaction, but you want to be the creative, I would ask, if not you personally, who can you suggest to us who does want to do that networking? Because here's the thing. 
I am valuable to the team, not because of my art skill. If you all to depend on me to do something in Photoshop, we would fail. But I'm a talker. So if you know somebody who I, I saw somebody made mention where they are open to something, but they're not sure about their team, probably you personally are not the person who wants to be in a festival, but a person on your team, they do want it. Because here's the thing, and this is what it is. For us to grow internationally, the festivals are free. They are numerous, and it is how it is done. So it is a must that we do this, and the best time for us to do it is now. We're coming out of one of the worst pandemics the world has seen in 100 years. People want things to entertain them, and they're looking for more black content. So we're coming out of the Caribbean that will be very widely received. And not to go on a long monologue, but after this, we'll go to this, is depending on what you want to do and depending on the career that you want to have. If it's a case where you just want to be in the room doing the work and you don't want to talk to people, that is understandable. But for you who have a team of persons who have somebody who will talk on your behalf, put that person forward and get the work out anyway. Because you might not want to talk, but you know somebody who will talk on your behalf. But it is necessary. This makes sense? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, again, if all you want is just to draw, there is a place for you. There will always be the persons who ne are needed to create that perfect content. But for where we are right now, it's not just the drawing, but it's those who are going to be those lead animators, those directors, those studio heads. Because where the industry is right now, it's the work and it's the sacrifices that you guys make that will help the persons next year and the following year and the following year. So Kevin went first. Following Kevin, you know some other persons, and I don't actually mean Kevin went first. I'm just using this place as an example. But let's use, let's say, for example, Real Rock, they had a contract first, and they set the outline, and then somebody else follow up, and they do it a little better, and then somebody comes after that person, and they do it a little better. And what happens is four or five years from now, we have a very active animation industry because of the work that the people who are here today did. And that is the goal, to get that domino tumbled, to get that momentum going.